Hello everybody, uh, my name is Andrew Trollson and I am going to be talking in this video chat about Expression Blend. Um, I gave this talk a little while back at the Twin Cities Microsoft offices and I'm just kind of re-recording it this morning for those of you that weren't able to attend. Now as you can see from this opening image here, there's a very clear distinction between uh, what Blend could let people become. You know, we are not going to become graphical artists by going through this discussion. What I really want to do here is to kind of illustrate some of the key parts of Expression Blend that uh, programmers will find immediately useful. You know, when it comes to making things like ultra, ultra sexy, that's probably better served for a graphical artist. But we, as developers, can certainly take Blend out for a test drive and also uh, use it to get some more complicated things done in a much easier way than we would if we were using Visual Studio alone. So here's the hit list that we're going to go through. Um, I'm going to begin by just kind of making sure we're all on the same page when it comes to why we need Blend anyway. I think a lot of you already know that, but just in case. Then I'm going to go ahead and just talk about some basic building blocks of the tool. You know, we'll talk about things like the asset library. I'll talk about the designer and its relationship to the objects and timeline window which can be a little unintuitive. I'll talk about the really fancy properties editor and just kind of get our bearings on things like the tool strips. Well, once we get those basics out of the way, then things are going to get a little more interesting. I think a lot of you are aware that one of the really neat things about WPF and Silverlight controls is there's this wonderful parent class called Content Control. And anything which extends that parent class has the ability to reshape its internal display. So rather than thinking that every single button has to have a string, we could say, well, my button has a nested stack panel that displays images and text. Uh, this fact alone makes WPF and Silverlight really compelling as a technology because it greatly decreases the amount of custom controls we have to build by hand. Well, we are designing this complex inner content using just Visual Studio. That could actually involve quite a bit of XAML. And Blend has a really nice way to build up that same kind of internal content with a graphical designer. Then we'll be talking about a collection of related topics. We will be talking about 2D geometries, the really fancy brush editor, um, applying graphical transformations, and how to construct resources in Blend. Um, and we'll see that just as you would expect, there's a way to define application level resources, resource dictionaries, or resources that are embedded within some sort of a uh, UI element. Then we will talk about the animation editor. Now remember when we're doing WPF and Silverlight animations, it doesn't mean that we have to be building video games here, right? We can use animations for much more subtle effects like a slight glow over a text box when it receives focus or maybe when the mouse goes over a custom control template you want to have it throb a little bit. So there's lots of really subtle animations that we can do and Blend has this fully integrated animation editor which makes things pretty darn simple. Now this one right here I think is extremely cool. Blend has this ability to magically transform a rendered geometry into a button style or a brand new custom user control. And this is totally sweet because with a simple click of a mouse button you can have this beautiful image that a graphical artist put together for you become a full featured user control. And this is just great so I think you guys are going to really like that. And as soon as we start to make custom controls we have to bump into the topics of templates and triggers. So we will also spend a little time talking about how to do that kind of stuff with Blend. And I'm going to wrap up with just a real quick peek at the forthcoming Blend 3.0, which uh, really improves upon things that we have today. So let's just start at the very beginning. Let's make sure that we're all on the same page when it comes to why do we need this Blend thing anyway. Well, the truth of the matter is, is that Visual Studio has really lame support for doing complicated XAML. I mean, yeah, we get IntelliSense, which is nice. Um, but when it comes to like the visual designer, that's pretty lacking. You know, the WPF designer is okay. 
currently the Silverlight designer is completely read-only. So if you were going to make a brand new Silverlight application and you were only going to use Visual Studio, that would mean you would have to be typing every single line of markup by hand. There's no drag and drop experience. You can't even select things on the properties window and actually change their properties. Uh, thankfully, Visual Studio 2010 will rectify this, but today it's not the case. So there's an obvious need for Blend. You know, Visual Studio can only take you so far. So here in this little screenshot is a simple application that I whipped together for this demo. And the, the required markup is certainly not rocket science. But when you start to do things like make custom brushes, then all of a sudden you're bumping into typically hexadecimal values to fill up all your gradient stops. And that is extremely tedious to try to type that into Visual Studio, see how it looks, make a change. So when we use a tool like Blend, we're going to have this full brush editor that makes it really ridiculously simple to build things like custom you know, gradient brushes, for example. Um, also, as you already saw from that previous slide, Blend can just do some awesome things with the snap of a finger, like just create brand new controls on the fly. So even if you are not considering yourself a real graphical artiste, don't worry, Blend still has plenty of cool tricks for you. Okay, so essentially all Blend really is, is just a big, huge XAML generator. That's all it's doing. You know, um, don't think that Blend 2.0 is a code editor, because it's not. Um, you'll be able to see your C Sharp and VB code files in the Blend project area, but as soon as you try to double click on them, it's just going to launch Visual Studio. So this is a little different in Blend 3.0, but I'll talk about that towards the end of this discussion. Now, if you're not aware of this, the nice thing is, is that the project format of Blend 2.0 is identical to that of Visual Studio. So this is a really great collaboration, right? You could begin a brand new WPF or Silverlight project in Visual Studio. A programmer could kind of, you know, put together a basic UI that gets the job done, write some event handlers, write some code, save it all out. And then a graphical artist could open the same exact project in Blend and then make things look a whole lot more interesting, you know, more eye candy. Or conversely, you could begin a brand new project in Blend. The graphical artist could make things look really, really great straight away. And then we open that project in Visual Studio and start to add event handlers. Okay, so typically WPF and Silverlight applications, you're going to be using both products kind of side by side. Now, this little talk is meant, again, just to kind of showcase some of the key pieces of working with Blend. This is not going to be a comprehensive examination of every possible thing you can do with the tool. So this is where the help system is really important. But uh, don't be looking for your help in uh, MSDN documentation. Blend itself has a full help system. And of course, as always, F1 is our friend. So I really encourage you, if you're interested in, in digging in deeper, you know, just fire up Blend and open up the help system. You're going to find oodles and oodles of tutorials. Um, you know, it'll show you all the keyboard shortcuts. It'll go ahead and show you a lot of things that I'm not going to talk about here. Like, if you're doing WPF, there's a whole 3D graphics editor as well. So don't be bashful. Get in there and check it out. And the other thing, too, is if you go to the official Expression website, you're going to find oodles of other training videos. Um, and it will go ahead and uh, you know, kind of add to and extend what I'm talking about here today.